primer design is crucial for PCR and there can be many mistakes being made or just bad luck, some primers just don't work. So what do you need to pay attention to when designing primers? Well, primer length can be an issue. So the primers normally work best if you design them to have to contain between 18 and 25 nucleotides in length. For most purposes, that's about the right length that makes most sense. However, it's not just the length, it's also the composition that makes a difference. So the composition of the primers um, should they should contain an even amount, an even percentage of GC. So the, G's, the amount of Gs and Cs in your primers should be something like 50% or maybe 60%, but not too much more, not too much less. And also you don't want all these Gs and Cs to be on one side of your primer while you don't have any of that uh, in, in the other end of your primer. They should be evenly distributed to work best. Okay, even that is not enough. You also want to avoid secondary structures. So no secondary structures. Um, and those secondary structures are mostly the, the hairpins that I've just been referring to. So if you realize that a portion of your primer, that's the five prime end, would be perfectly complementary to a region that's closer to the three prime end, that these bases would correspond and um, be complementary to each other. Uh, in such a case, you cannot expect that primer to bind to your DNA template efficiently, because after all, you need the entire primer sequence in order to kneel with your template. So that's the situation that you're trying to avoid. If you are unfamiliar with that or if you are simply too lazy to look at all these primers, you will find plenty of um, primer design programs on the net uh, that can help you to uh, design the primers properly. So the secondary structures are something that you want to avoid. Uh, in addition to that, you also want to avoid the situation where primers can just bind to each other and give rise to something that we call primer dimers. Uh, that's something that we will address in more detail in the next lecture, but uh, just to make it clear what I mean, if primers, that's a three, five prime end and three prime end, five prime and three prime, if they bind to each other like that, they will just be filled in like that. And that's not what you want to happen because that will always compete with the DNA that you're actually trying to amplify. So primer dimers should also be avoided when designing the primers. Okay, let's assume that you have been paying attention to all of that and still your PCR doesn't work. Well, that happens. Some primers just don't work, even though there's no obvious reason for that. In such a case, I suggest that you order four primers. Two in that direction and two in that direction covering the same template to be amplified. Because what you can do then is just try re your reaction with all possible combination. That is this primer with any of those two and this primer also with any of those two. So you've got four combinations in total and uh, chances are pretty good that at least one of them will work out. And what you can do on top of that is also use the, to use these primers for nested PCR if you need to be particularly sensitive with the reaction conditions that you are using. So much for the trivial case, or well, maybe not so trivial case, that you get no PCR product at all. In the next lecture, we will be talking in more detail about the primer dimers.